this lesson, we will be discussing a variety of questions, most of which are based upon polygons. In this first set of questions, we're asked to fill in the blank. For A, a closed plane figure that has three or more line segments is a blank. Looking at our notes below, a polygon is a closed plane figure that consists of three or more line segments. And here are several examples of polygons. So for statement A, a closed plane figure that has three or more line segments is a polygon. B, the side opposite the right angle in a right triangle is the blank. Looking back at our notes about a right triangle, a right triangle is a triangle that contains exactly one right angle. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called legs. So the legs are the two sides that form the right angle. The hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. It's also the longest side. So for B, the side opposite the right angle in a right triangle is the hypotenuse. C, the distance across a sphere passing through the center is the blank. This is the only question now dealing with a polygon. A sphere is a set of all points in space that are the same distance from a point C. So a sphere is three-dimensional, while polygons are two-dimensional. The point C is called the center of the sphere. The radius of a sphere is the distance from the center to any point on the sphere. And the diameter of a sphere is the distance across the sphere passing through the center. Looking at the sphere shown here, we see the center, we see the radius, and the diameter will be the length of this segment across the sphere passing through the center, the length of this segment here. So for statement C, the distance across the sphere passing through the center is the diameter. Now let's talk more about polygons before we go to the next set of questions. We now know a polygon is a closed plane figure that consists of three or more line segments. But there's also regular polygons, where a regular polygon is a polygon whose sides are all the same length and whose angles are all the same measure. Here we see several examples of regular polygons because for each polygon, each side has the same length. And we classify our name polygons based upon the number of sides. If a polygon has three sides, it's a triangle. If it has four sides, it's a quadrilateral. If it has five sides, it's a pentagon. If it has six sides, it's a hexagon, and so on. So for example, if we have a nine-sided polygon where all the sides are the same length, we would call it a regular nonagon. Now the next set of questions mostly focus on quadrilaterals. So let's first discuss the different types of quadrilaterals. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel. So here's an example of a parallelogram. To indicate the opposite sides are parallel, we often use small arrows. So to show this side is parallel to this side, we would use a single arrow. And to show this side is parallel to this side, we would use let's say two arrows. Sides with the same number of arrows indicate the parallel sides. It's also true that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal in length and that the opposite interior angles have the same measure. A rectangle pictured here is a parallelogram with four right angles. So the opposite sides are parallel, the opposite sides have the same length, and all the interior angles are right angles. A square is a rectangle with four equal sides so if the opposite sides are parallel, all the sides have the same length, and all the interior angles are right angles. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides. So the opposite sides are parallel, and the tick marks indicate all the four sides have the same length. And then finally, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So because this side is parallel to this side, we would use one arrow on each side, indicating these two sides are parallel. And they also determine if the statements above are true or false. A, a trapezoid is also a quadrilateral. Remember, a quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides, and because all trapezoids have four sides, this statement is true. A trapezoid is also a quadrilateral. B, a scalene triangle is also isosceles. We talked about triangles in our last lesson. Going back to our notes, a scalene triangle is a triangle with no sides the same length and no angles the same measure. When an isosceles triangle pictured here 
has two sides the same length and with the angles opposite the equal sides having the same measure. So scalene triangles are not isosceles triangle and therefore this statement is false. A scalene triangle is not also an isosceles triangle. Next, a rhombus is a rectangle. For this to be true, all rhombuses must also be rectangles. Well, a rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides, and a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So because not all rhombuses have four right angles, this statement is false. A rhombus is not also a rectangle. The last statement is a square is also a parallelogram. Well, a square is a rectangle with four equal sides, pictured here, and a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with opposite sides parallel. Notice for all squares, the opposite sides are parallel, and therefore this is a true statement. A square is also a parallelogram. And now for our last question, we're asked to identify each regular polygon. Now it does appear all these are regular polygons, but to be more precise, if these four sides have the same length, we should indicate this by using a single tick mark. For B, the same thing. If all these sides are the same length, each side should have the same number of tick marks. Let's put one tick mark on each side. That way there's no guessing whether this is regular or not. And the same thing for figure C. Again, this isn't required because we are told these are regular polygons, but using this notation is more precise. So figure A has four sides. A four-sided polygon is called a quadrilateral, and because all four sides have the same length, we call this a regular quadrilateral. Well, you might be saying to yourself, this actually looks like a square, and it does look like a square, but remember, by definition, a square is a rectangle with four equal sides, which means it also has four interior angles that are right angles, or measure 90 degrees. Looking back at the figure, while it does look like all the interior angles are 90 degrees, it does not indicate this by using little squares, and therefore we're not 100% sure this is a square, but I can see how someone might label this a square anyway. Let's count the number of sides in polygon B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sides of equal length, and therefore this is a regular decagon. Let's count the number of sides in polygon C. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides of equal length. This is a regular heptagon. And I think we'll stop here for this lesson.